Kesi hii ni pamoja na waziri wa fedha katika kaunti ya Busia Bernard Yaite, afisa mkuu wa masuala ya fedha Leonard Ombi, Obimbira na mweka hazina na mhasibu Samuel Ombui pamoja na Alan Omachari na Edna Odhiambo. Washtakiwa hao sita wameshtakiwa upya mbele ya hakimu mkuu wa mahakama ya milimani Douglas Ogoti baada ya upande wa mashtaka kuongeza mashtaka. Washtakiwa wanadaiwa kupanga kuipora kaunti shilingi milioni nane kupitia kampuni ya Madam R Enterprise kupitia mpango wa ukusanyaji taka ambao haukuomorodheshwa kwenye bajeti ya kaunti washukua wote wamekana madai hayo kesi hiyo tasikizwa tarehe 11 mwezi wa Septemba Na mstakbali wa mahakama humu nchini unaelekea kuyumba yumba hii ni kutokana na kupunguzwa kwa fedha za bajeti ya kitaifa ya mwaka huu kwa mara ya kwanza tangu kusomwa kwa bajeti hiyo rais wa mahakama ya upeo nchini na vile vile mwenyekiti wa tume ya kuajiri majaji David Maraga amelezea kufadhaishwa kwake na mkondo huo akidai kwamba ipo njama ya kuhujumu uhuru wa mahakama The National Government's Budgetary Policy Statement capped the judiciary's budget at 17.3 billion the ceiling was broken down as follows recurrent expenditure 13.3 billion development expenditure 4 billion which comprised uh, of uh, a gk funding of 1.05 billion and the world bank loan facility of 2.9 billion the jsc was given a ceiling of 4, 479.6 million shillings. However, when Parliament pass, passed the Appropriation Act, the judiciary's total budget allocation was further reduced to 14.5 billion. Out of this, the development budget uh, from the government is only 50 million shillings compared to 2.6 billion allocated to the judiciary in the financial year 2014-2015 the kenya shillings 50 million is expected to cover new and ongoing projects repairs maintenance as well as ict infrastructure for the courts we are at a loss over how to use 50 million for all those uh, purposes. The main consequence of these drastic cuts is that more than 70 court construction projects will without doubt stall. Na huko Kisumu Kevin Ogutu anayo taarifa ya mwanadada mmoja ambaye uraia wake haujulikani baada ya kulazwa katika hospitali ya Rufaa ya kaunti kwa muda sasa ambapo tayari ameshabarikiwa na hata kujifungua mtoto. Na hoi. No, she doesn't know. <laughs> Ndani ya chumba cha wanawake waliojifungua hospitali ya Rufaa ya kaunti ya Kisumu yupo mgonjwa anayetambulika kwa jina Beatrice sasa mwenye umri wa miaka takriban 30. Utaifa wake haujulikani bayana. She was admitted uh, in the hospital. Uh, later alone, they realized that she was, she was having a mental disturbance. Hata hivyo ilibainika hatimaye kwamba alikuwa akipitia mafadhaiko akilini na wala si kwamba alikuwa mwenye akili tahira. She went on in her with her pregnancy until she delivered a male baby. Baada ya kujifungua Masaibu yaliendelea kumuandama alipopata madhara wakati wa kujifungua hivyo kuhamishiwa wodi hii ya wagonjwa wa uzazi when one occupies one bed for a long period of time we miss the space so it forces us to make two patients sleep in each bed and this environment is also not good for babies madaktari wanaomhudumia wanasema sasa hali yake ni nzuri kuruhusiwa kurudi nyumbani ila nyumbani atakakorudi ni wapi when i was doing the psychosocial assessment she told me that she comes from southern Sudan and uh, any time I, I talk to her, the term Nile Patch Hotel will come in because according to her, some of her relatives work in Nile Patch Hotel. But in Kisumu, we don't have a Nile Patch Hotel. Haikuwa rahisi kwetu kukamua maneno kutoka kwake. Katika upande wa wagonjwa wenye akili tahira, hali ni ile ile. Usimamizi ukiwa na taabu ya kuthibitisha wanakotoka wagonjwa wane, 
ambao wamesalia kwenye wodi hiyo hata baada ya kumaliza matibabu patients who have stayed in the unit majorly because of financial status as well as not being identified or some of them are just dumped in the facility as you know the stigma related to mental illness some of these patients are brought once brought here the relatives abandon them and they don't they don't come back for them Kevin Ogutu KTA News Wanafunzi wa shule moja ya msingi katika eneo bunge la Kasarani hapa jijini Nairobi sasa wamesalia kuwa walala hoi baada kulazimika kutumia magunia badala ya madawati wanapokuwa darasani kutokana na ukosefu wa madawati ya kutosha mwanabari wetu Silia Wakesho alizuru shule hiyo na anaarifu jinsi ukosefu wa usalama katika shule hiyo umeathiri pakubwa matokeo ya wanafunzi Hili ndilo darasa la saba katika shule ya msingi ya Jehova Jire iliyoko eneo la Kasarani. Kiu ya kupata masomo kwa wanafunzi sabini na watatu kwenye darasa moja inawalazimu baadhi yao kugeuza magunia kuwa madawati. Wanaobahatika kuketi hata hivi wanajisitiri tu madawati ni hafifu. Hali ambayo wamekuwa nayo kwa muda ila harakati za kutumia madawati kwenye uchaguzi mkuu uliopita zilizidisha masaibu yao. Wenye unakaa hapa ni ngumu kuandika, hata kuangalia bao ni shida, jumekaa chini na hata unaumia kifua, hata sasa hivi unakuwa na homa ni msumo wa baridi. Alafu haya mangunia inakuanga na chakula mahindi. Watoto jua wana desks, huwa wanakujia, wanakalia, wanatumia kama desks. Ushawishi ambao umemsukuma mwalimu mkuu ambaye amemaliza tu juma moja tangu kuhamishwa katika shule hii kupiga firimbi katika juhudi za kudhibiti hali matokeo ya wastani mwaka uliopita yalikuwa 192 juu ya alama 500 matokeo ya juu zaidi ambayo yamewahi kushuhudiwa katika shule hii tangia mwaka 2005 ilipofanywa kuwa ya umma ni alama 230 tuna zile kompyuta zile leto na serikali lakini hizo kompyuta hatuna stima katika madarasa iko lakini hata tukiweka waya tukiweka nini inaibiwa kwa sababu hatuna security katika kwa shule usaidizi umekuwa kidogo kwa sababu kama ukuta huu ulijengwa zamani na CDF lini um, siku za waitito ndio alianzisha ukuta huu na yule ambaye alikuja baada ya waititu alijaribu kujaribu kumalizia tu katika chumba cha walimu haliduni aidha imewakodolea macho usalama wao umekuwa kwenye mizani wanapoenda haja wanalazimika kuandamana zaidi ya wawili au watatu wahalifu wana uhuru wa kuingia wakati wowote na hata kuwapokonya bidhaa kama simu vingi lio kwenye shule hii ni zaidi ya vitatu japo bawabu waliajiriwa miezi sita iliyopita ni mmoja Saini hii ya shule imewekwa juma lilopita baada ya ujio wa mkuu mpya aliyekuwa awali alistaafu. Mbuzi zinatoka kijiji zinaingia darasani. Watatu watoto wakati wanapokula chakula wakati mwingine wanangangania na mbuzi kwa sababu hatuna ua. Usimamizi wa shule unasema kwamba kiasi kikubwa cha mgao wa fedha za masomo ya bure kwa shule hii huishia jikoni ambako shirika la chakula duniani hutoa ufadhili wa chakula pasi na wapishi au kuni kinaani kwamba wanafunzi hao watahitajika kushindana na wenzao walio kwenye shule bora jijini kuanzia saa moja asubuhi hadi saa kumi unusu jioni changamoto kuu anayopitia mwanafunzi katika darasa la tano ni kuweza kumsikiza mwalimu na wakati huo huo kuandika ila hali dawati lake ni gunia Sisili wa kesho KTN News katika shule ya msingi ya Jehova Jire eneo la maili saba. Mwaji natumai kwamba wasimamizi katika eneo hilo ambao ni viongozi wataweza kuingilia